It's been five days since I binge watched the entire second series of Hearts of Her, and the show still has me in a chokehold, so you know how I can pay homage to that? I can read every book that Isaac and Hardstopper reads in series 2. I was gonna make this last year, but for whatever reason I end up not doing it, and also like other people have done it since then. But I was watching it, and as soon as I saw him reading something, I thought, yeah. I'm gonna make this video. And also with my upcoming Paris trip, it's absolutely perfect timing. Watching Isaac's storyline this series made me feel a bit called out because he reads at parties, he sits alone on the balcony, all things I would do. But without any more tangents, let's get into the list of the books that Isaac reads in series two of Heart Supper, starting with the ones that I successfully decoded. Ace of Space by Farida Ibiki Umide, We Are Okay by Nina Lacour, Book Lovers by Emily Henry, Les Miserables by Victor Hugo, The Awakening by Kate Chopin, We Have Always Been Here, Summerbird Blue and Ace by Angela Chen. And then the ones I did not decode according to denofgeek.com, The Outsider by Albert Camus, Crush, Boy Erased and The Swimming Pool. And then when I rewatched the clip, I love this part by Tilly Warden. In terms of the books that I actually plan to read for this video, since I have already read a fair amount of these, reviews will come later in this video. I ordered all of the books that at the time I had decoded, which were as follows. The Awakening, We Have Always Been Here, Summerbird Blue and Ace. I had also decoded Les Miserables, but that is a 1200 page tome and also if I was going to read it, I'd like to read it in its original language. Nah, you just saw its length and omitted defeat. But in terms of the ones that I did not decode, I realised that my mum has the French version original of The Outsider or L'Etranger, so I'm gonna try and get to that when I go to Paris. Honestly, I feel like we should just crack on with the vlog now. Hope you enjoy. The mail's here! Oh. Here's the mail, it never fails It makes me wanna wag my tail When it comes I wanna wail Only two of the books have come? I mean, to be honest, am I going to read a lot of books when I'm in Paris? No. We have We Have Always Been Here. I love how floppy this is. And then the other one I have is Summer Bird Blue by Kim Dorn Bowman. I'm excited, but also we're stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit. I don't know. Should be interesting. Let's see what I think of these books. Wait a minute. This book is signed and dedicated. Evdokio, if you're watching this, I have your book. It's the first day of the Paris trip, and today we're going to Shakespeare and Company in the Parthenon, which my mum keeps pronouncing the Parthenon. Didn't realise we'd magically transported to Athens in the night, mum. Yes, I'm going to be hot, but I'm going to be hot in whatever outfit I wear, because, you know, I am just incredible. Of course, that is a joke. Here's a very, very quick room tour. We need to be out the door very, very soon. Also, lovely slight view of the Eiffel Tower. Got a nice view of a road and this thing. Let's go. I cannot justify that. disappointed with Shakespeare and Company this time. Sure, I would recommend going to visit, I'd recommend buying a book because they stamp it, and also a tote bag because I use that pretty much every day. I really, really like it. But you kind of need to accept that you're gonna get ripped off 
because it's English books in France. They're totally unregulated, so they can kind of charge what they like, including 25 euros for a song for the world bill, which I really want to read. And yes, it's also really expensive in the UK too, but I was not paying 25 euros for that. I also wanted to find Immortal Longings, but they only had the UK edition and I, I hate the UK edition. I was only gonna buy it if they had the North American edition. The last time I was in Paris, I did see some US editions of books that I knew I could not get hold of in the UK. So it's worth having a look, but you're gonna get ripped off. I hope this match goes penalty is just for the drama. I'm going to preface this review by saying that I am not the target audience for this book. I think I was kind of expecting it to be a bit more half memoir, half essay collection. Just going on the title, We Have Always Been Here, it seems more like an exploration of that. And while it kind of was, it was just only that through her experiences rather than the essays that I was expecting. I sincerely hope this gets into the right hands because I know that it will help a lot of people, but it wasn't the book for me. I believe another book has been decoded. So there's a bit where Isaac is walking on a bridge holding a book. Apparently, according to the internet, that book is Le Petit Prince, which I have already read. And so I can kind of talk about that, but not right now. Right now, I'm going to some bookshops. C'est fermé.
and then it was the last day. Today we're going to Versailles because it's a kind of touristy thing that I haven't done before. And I've read 20 pages of L'Etranger by Albert Camus, or The Outsider in English. It's kind of just the setup at the moment of the main character going to his dead mother's funeral. I don't really know where it's going to go, but it's fairly easy to read and that's good enough for me. I call this dish, buy some chickpeas and throw in whatever the heck you've got in your fridge. Lemon because it's basically the only thing you've got for flavour. Chopped tomatoes because these actually have flavour here. Yikes, perhaps I should have cut these. I know what will stop the pesky tomatoes in their tracks. More acid. A little bit of cheese because flavour and also we bought this whole thing and hardly used any of it. Delicious. This thankfully could taste disgusting, but I'd still be saying, oh yeah, delicious. Just dump in this whole bag of spinach. There's literally spinach everywhere. Because, I mean, you need to use it up. It's just a pan of spinach. Let that spinach get angry and start to wilt. Cut up a chonky pepper. Serve with a bit of couscous. And some rice that you can't really work out how to heat up. And then you're good to go. It's healthy. Probably. Wow, look who's in the UK. If you didn't understand from that incredible artistic talent just then, I'm back from holiday and I am not thrilled about it. The last few days I have not read a single page. Something about being back here is just like, for goodness sake, all I want to do is just yeah, I'm not happy. <laughs> As I walk to the local baker's, let's talk about Summer Bird Blue by Akemi Dawn Bowman. I think my opinions on this book are really mixed because the writing kind of felt like it was trying too hard. There were quotes that were sort of meant to be poetic and trying to convey grief in this really r lyrical way, but it ended up giving me... Riddles everywhere. The writing kind of felt a bit fake deep. It was like a rupee core poetry book. Apparently it made people cry, so it obviously is effective, but it just isn't for me. I know she was stuck in this whole narrative because she's grooving and she can't get over the death of her sister, that makes sense, but it was kind of just a bit frustrating to read about and I just felt like a really terrible human being. Finding this character irritating, I just kind of felt really detestable. I don't think this author's writing is for me. I don't think it's a bad book. When we had discussions of identity, it got better, but I think that, from my memory, Loveless does those discussions a bit better. I don't know what I'll give it in terms of rating. Maybe like a 2.5 or a 3. No baguettes in the bakery, so I'm having to go to Tesco. I'm gonna try and be respectful. Emphasis on try. Because I don't think I can even preface this book by saying that I don't think it was bad, because I genuinely do think this is not a great book. It really is the reason why people who don't read classics don't read classics. It was dry, it was 
boring. I really did not care about anything in this book. I had nothing to cling on to. The characters were one dimensional. The writing just wasn't that great. And I couldn't really picture anything that was going on. When you can understand and see in your head what's going on in a book that you're reading in your second language more than the one in your first, then Houston, we have a problem. The problems don't end there with this book. The fact that it's less than 200 pages and I suffered through this, honestly, the sigh of relief I had when I finished this, wow. It's the kind of thing I just want to not burn. I wouldn't burn this, but I would uh, chuck this off a bridge into the River Seine. Now, this book is set in Louisiana in the 1800s. And something I did know before going into this is that Louisiana has quite a strong French history. There's quite a lot of French stuff in here, French characters, French language. So you would have thought I would be interested in that, but no. The internet heralds this book as a great feminist classic, but I actually think the messages and the way that discussion pans out in this book could actually be quite redacted. The ending especially, and the kind of last awakening of the book. I'm trying to be as convoluted as possible so I don't spoil anything, sorry about that. I can't say things concisely when I'm trying to omit a big spoiler. It could be argued, actually, that this book is against women getting the right to do things with their life because it presents the protagonist who tries to step out of what society wants from her as an adulterer and kind of a bad person, which I don't think you'd want representing your cause. I kind of understand why it was ended in the way it was, just based in the time this was written, but at the same time I just left thinking, well, what were you trying to do? Because there's different ways of interpreting this that I don't think you were intending to do, but you still kind of did. I can't tell you a single redeeming quality or anything I liked about this book. So by definition, it's getting a one star review from me. On to the last book. Please be good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Why are we here? Before I give you my opinions on Ace and try and wrap up this video, I'm going to give you a quick fire series of reviews of books that I've already read. Starting with Ace of Spades. My first thought when Isaac held up this book was good choice. It's kind of like if Heartstopper was a thriller, although with a little bit more social commentary about racism, as it follows the only two black students at this very prestigious high school. I'm not normally a great fan of young adult thrillers, besides like A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, but this one I thought was really good and I would highly recommend. We Are Okay by Nina LaCour is the type of book that perhaps I should have found devastating and really deep, but I just ended up not really. I think that Watch Over Me by the same author is a better book objectively. It's better written, the characters are better, it's more atmospheric and overall just a better book. Whereas We Are Okay kind of, it's simple and for some people simple can be effective, but this one is a contemporary novel about a girl who's away at university and then her friend comes to visit and it very much focuses on their relationship and also the stuff going on with our protagonist's grandfather. So it should have been deep, but it just wasn't particularly for me. But I know loads of people will love this, so I'm not going to knock it and say you shouldn't read it. But it just wasn't something that I would highly recommend, you know? Book Lovers is an interesting one. Where others saw great banter, I saw first draft. I thought this felt really rushed. I don't know if it was because I read this book in a day for a video I did last year where I read seven books in seven days, but I don't know, it just didn't really feel like a fully fleshed out book. It was quite a strange reading experience because I did race through it even though I didn't love everything I was reading. It just kind of felt like 
Oh, right, that's it. I'm trying to think about what else to say, but honestly, I don't really remember this book. And I think it's quite funny how everyone seems to have a different ranking order for Emily Henry's books. I don't know, it's, it's strange. And finally, Le Petit Prince by, what's his name? Antoine de Saint-Exupéry? This one is quite a cute little children's book. I must say a lot of this went over my head, so I don't think I can give you a full review. I thought this was a nice time, but I don't think it's like one of the best books I've ever read, although I would need to reread it. Perhaps now, since my French is probably a little bit better than it was last year, I will understand more, but I don't know. I would have reread this book for this video, but honestly, I just don't have the time. And also, reading books in French takes me forever, so this video will probably never get uploaded. But yeah, I didn't love this book, but I didn't dislike it either. So those are all the books that I'd already read. Back to future me. This was hands down the best book I read for this video. Absolutely no contest. For a non-fiction, it's accessible, it's interesting, and it made me question stuff about the world, so I think mission accomplished. I can see exactly why Isaac would find himself reading this book. I think it's a good thing for him to read, and I think if you're interested in this subject, then you should definitely give it a read. I just recommend it and I don't know if there's necessarily like a lot to talk about because I feel like the stuff mentioned in here would benefit from like a full-on video essay about society and while that is interesting to me it's not really what this channel is about so I won't bog you down with that obviously if you want to see me rant about stuff then I mean you kind of already uh watching that anyway all you need to get from this is that I think this is a really good non-fiction book and I think it says everything it needs to say of course, I think some phrasing could be different, like there's always little nitpicks in things like this. I'm sure it will become outdated and the author will need to change bits and add certain things, but for now I think it's a very comprehensive guide to the subject. If I say anything more, I will just keep going around in circles repeating the same thing. So I think we should just get on to the outro and the kind of conclusion of Isaac and his taste. I don't know if we're necessarily the most compatible, but at the same time, I don't know if Isaac enjoyed all these books. I like that this video made me read things out of my comfort zone, but I also hated it because I think it put me into a reading slump and is the reason why I read four books in August, despite having loads of free time. Honestly, I'm really glad that this video is now over and I have now finished reading the books for it because it's been a, it's been a bit of a struggle bus. I'm gonna be honest. But anyway, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who got through this video. I hope you enjoyed. Sincerely, I do. Certainly crack on with all the typical YouTuber stuff. Subscribe, like, comment, and I will hopefully see you in my next video. I've got some kind of interesting content planned. I just kind of felt in a bit of a rut with content this year for some reason. I don't know, it, it happens, but yeah, see you later. Goodbye.